So quite often in uh, making logic, you have this logic cube floating around. Uh, you may see in different levels or different tutorials, and it may may not be a cube, maybe any shape, but some sort of sculpt. And then they have um, a chip on it and things like this. And But you never see this thing because it's always invisible and non-collidable. And um, But it just it's there to be used as... Like, I want logic over there, or it's over here, or I want to emit logic in some place, or have it move around. Um, uh, so I'm going to explain why that is, and how it works, and when you uh, might need to use something like this. So first, uh, we add a sculpt. And I usually choose a cube, because it's the default thing. Um, I use the grid snap as well, so that when I place that object... Um, it's the center of it is on the grid. That's true for the DS4 because when you are um, looking at a cube, so if I turn off the grid, um, when you're looking at a shape um, ready to be stamped down, you're actually holding it by the center of it. Um, with the DS4, uh, with the moves, it's a little different. Um, but in that case, you can use uh, shift and square, which means the secondary triangle and the primary square to get this menu and you can click on grip and then make sure to click on that center one you'll probably have that one just click on the center one and now you'll be holding it by the center there's also if you hold circle with the secondary move controller and then grab the shape with the secondary move controller then you can hold it and move it around and look at it and it shows you the grab points uh, in a similar way to this and then you can use the primary move controller to click on the one you want and then you'll resume holding the shape with the primary controller so now if uh, while we have the grid on we can use l1 and triangle to snap to this object and then we have the perfect center point because one of those grid points will be in the center um, of the object and it's useful also because uh, with the cube because you see the corners are on the dots so it's very easy to tell that you're um, using the grid of this object. So now let's um, uh, let's quickly turn off the grid, and we'll add a mover. And uh, if you just stamp it anywhere, uh, then we can uh, tweak this using the L1 and and square, and then from the affected objects we get this special object wire and we can attach it to an actual object in the scene whether it's a sculpt or a group uh, so we'll click on that and now we have this uh, arrow that's the direction the mover will uh, push it in so if you play time it's pushing that object in that direction even though this ob this uh, gadget isn't actually attached to this it still uh, works as expected and this can be uh, in a chip as normal and it would still have that wire coming out of it now if we um, if we move this onto the object if we hold L1 and let then let go of R2 then that um, that link disappears but it's still linked if we pull it away you can see that link is still there but while it's actually surface snapped with L1 it just hides that for you um, so when you actually make the mover Uh, if you hold, if this is a new mover and you hold L1, then it will surface snap uh, to begin with and then you just stamp it and now it's got that link already applied for you. Um, now with the uh, microchip, you can surface snap it in the same way. So uh, if you actually look at the tweak menu, it has this apply to object and you can uh, link that to an object. And now that means any um, gadgets inside this chip such as the mover, will affect that object. So if we click on it, we can see it has the arrow and it's all linked up as normal, and it pushes the object along. So you can you can actually, uh, instead of using that link, we can uh, hold L1 and stamp it on there or move it onto the object so it's surface snapped. And again, this is still linked up in the same way. 
Um, and it's the same for uh, sensing things as well. So if we uh, use grab sensor, so if we put this grab sensor on the object, uh, it works the same way. Whoa, works the same way. It has this uh, link, link coming out of the left side because it's using this object as an input to know if it's being grabbed or not and things like that. Um, so it works exactly the same way as a, a mover and you can put it in the chip just as normal and put the chip on the object. So we go into uh, test mode. Now when we hover over it, that is still linked to the object and we still get that hovered output. Now the issue is if you have something that you want to be central to that object, um, such as a tag maybe, then uh, a tag uses, uh, or any ga gadget by default, uses its chip's uh, position, uh, meaning the front, the center of the front of the face of the chip right there is the actual position. Um, but the gizmo, if it hasn't got the position set, it kind of appears above the gadget. So now things that are targeting this object will be targeting the front of that object. So if I just give this, uh, this tag a name, so now if I put a follower on here and have it target that tag, then it will move towards the front of that object instead of the center of it, because that tag is actually positioned, its location is on the front. So then if you want it to be in the center, you can turn on the grid. And because we've got this object uh, nice and aligned to the grid already, we can just drag this uh, tap triangle to align it to a grid dot and put it in the center there. So now the grid posi the tag position is in the center of that object and then when you play time this will target the center of that object instead of the front of it. I tend to actually instead of uh, surface snapping this I grab the chip and I put it into the center of the object as you can't see now but then I turn on x-ray in the show hide menu and now I can see it and I can use triangle on that as well while I'm holding it to snap that to the central uh, grid dot. And now this tag is actually still in the front center of that chip, which means it's in the center of that object. So this thing will follow to the center of that object uh, as we want it to. And then if you want other things that share that location, such as a laser scope is quite common, then that will be from the center of the object as well, and so on and so forth. A, a trigger zone, whatever you need. So I tend to do it this way so that anything I add in here will always be the center of this logic object. So then I group the object with the microchip and then I tweak the microchip and you can actually, so you can tweak from the gadget itself or you can tweak from the window and it will tweak the gadget. And then I apply to object to the group. Now if I applied this uh, to the sculpt itself um, and I had a mover in here, then the mover would apply to that sculpt and not to the group. So then if I play time, the sculpt is moving, but the rest of the stuff in the group, these gadgets and stuff, uh, aren't moving because it's not applying to the group itself. So then if you scope out first and apply it to the group, and now that mover will move the whole group, including all that logic which is more likely to be uh, what you want. So uh, when would you actually want to use this though? Let's say we had a tag in here uh, and it was uh, named and we had a uh, puppet and we want to teleport this to, to that position over there or to a, a position that we dictate. We want to make a position and this could be taken from variables or something but we'll just use a value slider. So the, the puppet's um, chip is actually has one of those wires attached to the puppet group. So we want to teleport this puppet to um, a sp specified position. So we have a teleporter on it, like that. But there is no input for the position we want to want this teleporter to use. So it just won't use anything. It can only use a tag name. So then we can have this logic object, this logic cube, and use that tag name by pressing up and down on the D-pad to cycle through those. So now we're targeting that tag, and it's putting us in the center of that cube. So then we can emit this cube where we actually want the uh, the puppet to, to teleport to. 
Uh, so if we go in here and stamp down an emitter, then we can link it to that cube. And then we can wire this location into the uh, into the scene space transform input, but it also allows uh, locations. So there you go. So now we can just move it up some more. This is the Y component, or oh, down some more, I guess. We can move it up some more. Now it's in the sky, and then we can move it in that direction some more, and so on. So. So now we have a way of just using some numbers. Uh, these could be from variables um, to set the position that that object will be emitted at so that we can get that tag and then target the tag with the teleporter, something like that. Um, so it's particularly useful for emitting some logic at a place. I'd like to thank Rev Player. Jack Power, Martinity DK, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.